Hey YouTube, this is Itchy, and I have some additional info about the high RAD level readings uh, in North Carolina. We have some now from St. Louis around the same time, and I want to talk to you about how to mitigate iodine-133 exposure. Now, we had um, a theory that we were working with because of some blue lights that were showing up on the TEPCO cameras uh, prior to these high readings. Um, we assume that there were ongoing criticalities at the plant, and it looks like that's true because what's being measured in St. Louis is high readings of iodine-133. Um, now, iodine attacks the thyroid, and the way to minimize your exposure to iodine is either to take potassium iodine pills, which um, do have a possibility of side effects, the number one being allergies, and, and you wouldn't know if you're allergic to it until you take it. And it's um, the benefits have to outweigh the risks. And in infants, it can cause brain damage. So before you take these pills, you need to, um, and especially give them to your children, you would need to contact your pediatrician or your family doctor and ask their advice to help mitigate um, iodine-133 exposure. The other thing you can do is start incorporating as much of these foods into your diet as possible. Um, I just searched for a, a quick list about what are the top foods that contain potassium and they listed a number of uh, dried herbs, avocados, turmeric, chili powder, paprika, chocolate, I didn't know about that one, dried fruits, nuts and there's lots more you can look it over um, if there's ever been a time to start eating healthy it's now because you want to protect your cells you want to boost your immune system and you want to help prevent uh, radiation uptake in your thyroid gland especially with iodine 133 now um, Potter blog had listed off the graph readings on the 17th of October from rainwater samples I went over to any news forum and you can um, search the site and see what kind of radiation monitoring is going around from independent scientists, people with Geiger counters around the country and around the world, Canada, there's all kinds of readings here. But um, I did go down to uh, the same time in October, October 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th and a viewer posted some uh, some very high readings in Michigan. Well, this would have been the same time this jet stream went through this area and let me show you quickly the path that it took. It, so basically anyone in the Pacific Northwest, Utah, um, the Dakotas, Idaho, um, Nebraska, Missouri, Indiana, Ohio, Michigan, and, and basically up the whole eastern seaboard was um, exposed to high levels of iodine-133. And they could have warned us, and we could have taken these pills, um, you know, prior to it, and they would have been more effective that way. And now we're at the 20th, so you can see the path that it took. And now we've got this other area coming in. Now, what's going on at the TEPCO plant? In addition to the blue lights that we saw, um, now there's some green ones too. You can see the flashing here off this tower. This is from October the 20th. So this is on its way here and it has probably already hit the west coast. And I've got another one from BP Oil Disaster. And this one's pretty strange. Um, in fact, I, I read a research paper yesterday about uh, fissioning in reactors and the kind of lights that are generated from um, neutron beams and 
and prior to seeing these videos, I was only aware of the blue beams that we've been used to seeing around the TEPCO plant, especially at the beginning of the disaster. That was really what alerted people that uh, something really bad was going on. Um, apparently, there's also red, orange, green, and then blue in descending order. The, uh, the red and the orange indicates a higher and hotter neutron reaction. And it's about as much detail that I can give you about that. If you want to see the paper, um, uh, PM me and I'll, I'll try to dig it up for you. should be coming up here any second. It's going to be right in this area. I checked the daytime cameras just to see what is there because there's so much steam and smoke. Um, this, by the way, is the incinerator where they're burning all the trash on site, the radioactive trash, sending it up into the air. And also, um, I read on any news today that it appears from a whistleblower who's working on site at Fukushima that Reactor 5 and 6 is now um, experiencing some type of crisis, and Hitachi is on its way to the plant to see what they can do to mitigate that. Now, um, this article was just posted yesterday, so who knows how long it's been going on. That could have something to do with these elevated iodine-133 readings. And here's the orange light. It'll blow it up in a second. This is the third time that I've made this video. It keeps getting deleted. Pretty crazy stuff. And I don't think this is a, a CCD disturbance in the digital video. In fact, what this reminds me of is a video that I have posted on my site, and I'm going to show it to you here real quick. This is a water experiment that was done on the ISS, the International Space Station. I'm going to blow it up for you, and I'll let it run through. It's pretty short. And you're going to see this thing really take off in a second. I'm not even sure <laughs> if this has anything to do with uh, the orange beams that we're seeing, but they look so similar. I just had to share that. Now, um, something else that really caught my attention was the fact that, um, and let me back this up again to the 17th, there were some animal deaths reported just south of the extremely high radiation readings that we were getting in North Carolina on 1017. On or around that date there was a, an incident of um, uh, mass bird deaths around a hotel in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I'll put a link to this article at the bottom. Um, basically, the uh, Department of National, uh, Natural Resources in South Carolina is saying that the birds flew into the side of the hotel, maybe because it was dark. Um, that's uh, the, the official stance at this point. And in addition to that, in the Georgian Bay area, and let me just show you where that is. That's right here. Georgian Bay, Ontario. Uh, 6,000 seagulls were found, washed up. Um, they're blaming it on botulism from eating poisoned fish. And prior to the bird deaths, Apparently, there were uh, quite a few sturgeon that had been washing up in that area for a couple of weeks. So, there are um, nuke plants in that area. I've actually been to one of them for a tour. I don't know what to make of, of all this data. We've got 
flashes going on at TEPCO. We've got um, a new crisis going on in reactor five and six. We've got um, high readings in North Carolina, high readings of iodine-133 in St. Louis. We've got bird deaths in Ontario, bird deaths in South Carolina, and, and basically, you know, this jet stream moved up the entire eastern seaboard. And then one other thing that I want to show you is there appears to be a generalized uptake, uptick in the, um, in the baseline readings. And uh, it's showing up not exclusively in California, but I did notice it on most of their graphs. I'll put a link to these graphs at the bottom so you can see what's going on in your area. Even San Francisco here is showing uh, a little bit. And I'm not sure what to make of that either. That could have something to do with uh, what's going on at the plants. So um, I'll enclose some links for you, and I'll keep you posted. Everybody stay safe and uh, work that potassium into your diet as soon as possible. Be safe.